Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video. This video is sponsored by Audible, more about that a little bit later. In last week's video, I got started building this DIY diesel generator that's gonna go aboard Athena and hopefully provide us with all of the energy we could ever need. For me to connect the alternator that's gonna go right here to the itty bitty Perkins, I need just a few more doohickeys and I'm hoping they'll show up over the next couple of days. While I'm waiting for those parts to hopefully show up, the weather outside is really nice and dry, so why don't we start glassing over some old port lights. More specifically, the aftmost port lights on the hull, this one on the port side and one on the starboard side. Oh, and if there's a little bit of background noise out here, don't mind that, that's just the cement boat people hard at work. Why would I wanna glass over two perfectly good looking port lights? Well, for two slightly different reasons. The one on the starboard side is located here inside of what's gonna be the technical compartment. You can just barely see the frame of it right up there. Here's what the inside of the technical compartment looks like. Now, port lights, they leak. It's their nature. It's not a matter of if they start leaking. It's more a question of when. And there's gonna be a lot of expensive doohickeys in here, so I wanna do everything I can to prevent leaks, especially in here. And also, the generator is gonna go right here in this general area, so it's gonna be blocking the port light anyways. If the port light here in the aft cabin starts leaking, well, that's not as big of an issue. The reason I wanna close up this old port light is so that I can move it over here into the cockpit because that means it can be an opening port light. Athena's hull curves too much to be able to use a decent size opening port light. Those have kind of tight tolerances. I think we might be able to get away with using the smallest one you can get, but I would like something a little bit bigger in the aft cabin, and that we can certainly put in the side of the cockpit. Just to be clear, I don't want to put it up on the cockpit combing. I want to put it down there. Let's go ahead and remove those old port lights. That's going to happen from the outside of the boat. Because I'm gonna be glassing over the deck hull joint in a few months, I'm not too worried about damaging the hull. So let's just do this the fast and easy way. That's one down, one to go. And that's two out of two. I'm gonna be putting a one to 12 bevel on those holes so I have something to tie the new fiberglass into. And for that, nothing I've tried beats this setup. These discs are a lot cheaper than the flabby version. I don't know what those are called in English. And they do a really good job of making a nice uniform bevel. If you've got some holes you need to patch aboard your boat and you've never tried it before, West System has this really great guide where they give you a bunch of examples for various sizes of holes and also various locations for holes above the waterline, below the waterline, and also examples where you can't access the back of the repair. It's a really great guide, and I'll include a link for that down in the description. For the holes I'm patching here, I think I might be able to get away with just beveling one side, but the belt and suspender solution is definitely to bevel both sides. And I am gonna put up some scaffolding along the outside of the boat to work on the deck hull joint in the not too distant future, so it'll be easy to bevel the outside then. For now, let's just get the inside bevel out of the way. I am not looking forward to this. That was tedious and time consuming, but everything is sanded. I've cut all of the fiberglass I need, also some peel ply, and I've got something to act as a backer for consolidating the laminate. Because it's a great big gaping hole and I do need to be able to push in on the laminate just a little bit to get it consolidated, I've cut some pieces of plywood here. I've cut one that's pretty much an exact match for the port light. And I've cut a slightly bigger one. So this is gonna go on here, then there's gonna be a piece of plastic, and then a piece of peel ply on top of that. 
But you guys will see this backing doohickey in action a little bit later. I'm going to be wetting out the fiberglass here because it's a repair on a vertical surface and it's also a pretty small repair. If it's a larger repair you're doing, wetting it out and trying to take the wetted out fiberglass and putting it up can be a real pain in the behind. But for something this size, it should work out well. As you can probably see, it's, it's pretty dark in here without that port light. And that is why I want to add one in the cockpit. Now I just got to make sure that this is all nice and consolidated. The finishing touch is a little piece of peel ply. That'll make it a little bit easier for me when it comes time to put up insulation because I won't have to sand this area. Before I started wetting out the fiberglass, I took my little backing doohickey and wedged it in place using a ladder. Now that does look a little bit janky, but it did the job. As you might be able to tell by the lighting, it's getting pretty late in the day. Fixing those two holes took about four and a half hours. And once you've fixed a couple of holes on your boat, it gets pretty tedious. Now to combat that, I listen to audiobooks from Audible, the sponsor of this video. Nothing helps pass the time better than listening to an audiobook from Audible when spending hours sanding or laying up fiberglass. And the same goes if you've got a long commute or like spending endless hours at the gym. You can listen anywhere. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks and my personal favorite hero board, Athena. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection and access to daily news, as well as guided meditation programs. Right now, I am listening to Stephen King's It, but Audible also has a long list of sailing-related books Amongst them, my all-time favorite, Two Years Before the Mast. I'll include a link down in the description for my favorite sailing and non-sailing related audiobooks. Go to audible.com slash sailife or text sailife to 500-500 and start listening with an exclusive 30-day free trial, one free audiobook of your choice, and two Audible originals absolutely free. Good morning, guys. It is the next day, so now I can go ahead and remove my little backing doodad. Once I've got the scaffolding in place, it's going to be very easy to grind a nice bevel on the outside here and lay up the last bit of glass. I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is that a bunch of the stuff for the generator showed up. This is all of the exhaust stuff. There's a bunch of hoses in here, some hose clamps and this funny looking muffler. The manufacturer is claiming that this is one of the most silent mufflers on the market. That will be very interesting to see. And that brings us to the bad news. Because even though I've got all of the parts for the exhaust and the water intake, I don't have the belts or the table locks that's going to allow me to actually connect the alternator to the Perkins, which means we can't get this up and running this week because everything is shut down for Easter. The good thing about a somewhat extensive refit like the one I'm doing here aboard Athena is you never really get bored. There's usually always something else you can work on. Like for instance, I've got this stainless steel pole that's gonna go right here. This somewhat beefy stainless steel pipe is gonna serve three purposes. For one, it's gonna help take some of the load off of the cabin top for where the main sheet attaches to the cabin top. And it'll give us something really nice to grab onto when moving around inside of the boat or just right here next to the stove. And also, last and kind of least, it could serve as a mounting point for like an iPad or something else in this area. I want this to tie into the structural members that are here underneath the cabin sole. And because I didn't know exactly where the nav station was going to go, I couldn't really leave this open until now. So yeah, I'm going to have to open up a little section of the cabin sole. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen with the Tech 7 that I use to adhere the cabin sole in place. Is it going to pull the paint off the bottom of the cabin sole or what's going to happen? We'll uh, find out. It's time for the trusty paint can opener to spring into action again. Now, whatever damage I've done down here should be easy to fix.
In the back of my mind, I've gone through a lot of different options on how to get this pole into its vertical position. And it's the reason I haven't put in the main diesel tank yet, because I thought I might be able to shimmy it in there and push it up. But in the end, I decided it was easier just to cut a giant hole. I'm sure somebody is going to comment saying that I could just have used the smaller hole that's going to go here to allow us to use this little compartment as storage to finagle all of this in here. But in the end, I think it's just going to be quicker to just cut a decent sized hole, get the thing in there and then just glass this back up. I'll just grab a quick measurement down here and then we can start actually fabricating this thing. Right here is all the stainless I need. This will turn into the first of the bottom flanges to the plasma cutter. Here are the four pieces that's going to secure the thing to the boat, the uh, business end, if you will. It's upside down right now because that's just a little bit easier for me to hold. I think it's going to be a nice tight fit, but there's only one way to find out and that's to tack everything together. But first, I should probably go ahead and finish these two end doohickeys. First up is just to drill four holes in each of the two flanges. That should be pretty straightforward. Drilling holes is pretty straightforward. What I find very challenging as a newbie metal worker is rounding over corners. I've been told to start by just making a 45 degree end to it and then just rounding that over. But still, they always kind of turn out wonky looking. That's eight rounded over corners. Not two of them are alike, but that's fine. Nobody's ever gonna see this. This is just tagged together for now. It's just to do a little test fit to see if I got the size right. It seems very loose out here, but if we push it in where it's actually gonna sit, it holds itself. I think that is pretty much as good of a job as I can do. Now, this little guy is going to go on top of here and then it's just a matter of welding everything. Besides getting this thing welded and it's now rock solid, I've also made the little flange that's going to go on top of the pole. Before I start trimming the pipe to size, I want to drill the holes for the bottom part here so that I know exactly where that's going to go. I don't have the real bolts yet, so I'm just temporarily using these just to hold it in place. All that's left now is to trim this to size, and uh, that's the part I'm the most nervous about because I don't want to end up with this being too short. I've trimmed the pole so that it actually fits in here now, so now it is just a matter of making room for this little top flange. Using the science of stir sticks, the pole is now aligned. I'm gonna head down and make that last cut. Now would be a great time to cross your fingers. Would you look at that? A nice snug fit. Now to be able to get this thing back in there once everything is welded together, I might have to open up that hole, but that's fine. I've been up and down the ladder a few times, but uh, I think I've finally got it. Let's see how this thing fits. It's not 100% perfect. There is a tiny bit of a gap out there between the cabin top and the flange. My plan for the gap up here is to take some epoxy, thicken that with 406, add a tiny bit of chopped up fiberglass, that should be very strong in compression, which is what I need here. I'll drag the pole down to the workshop and take care of the last bit of welding. And then I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning for something completely different. Good morning, guys. As you can see, the cement boat people are busy painting their masts here in the background. And uh, I've prepped the itty bitty Perkins in the hopes that there's gonna be a little bit of primer left over. Martin and Karina, AKA the cement boat people, decided to splurge on a used airless spraying doohickey in the hopes that it would make painting a lot easier.
this is quite possibly the ugliest color for an engine, but uh, well, it's just the primer. Last night I ordered all the bolts I need to secure the pole, so hopefully those will show up next week. But before I can actually put the pole in place, there's something I have to take care of. The core in the cabin top is balsa, which is great, except for in areas where you're going to be through bolting stuff. So this area here, I'm going to replace the core with plywood. I can use the fiberglass skin I removed as a template for the plywood. Et voila! A perfectly sized piece of plywood. I'm going to use a little bit of epoxy thickened with 406 for adhering that plywood in place. And a dab will do ya. Um, <laughs> I think I might have applied the thickened epoxy to the wrong side of the thing. Oh well, let's uh, just try this again on the other side. Before I started applying the thickened epoxy, I did a quick test fit and it only fits in one way. So that's why I just had to correct that little mistake. I've removed the little bit of squeeze out. So now I'm just going to leave this here to cure. Once it's cured, I can come back, give all of this a sanding and lay up a little bit of glass to tie into the bottom skin here. Now let's do something here in the head. If you guys recall, last week I made this little template here for the vanity. Now, just in case you're wondering why the heck this thing has changed color all of a sudden, well, I sanded off the oil or stain that was applied to the top and the bottom just so that we could have the edges here match. So that way we can choose our own oil or stain. I think this worked out fairly well. In case this turns out to be a maintenance nightmare, we can always just use this as a template for some compact laminate or some Corian. I've cut a couple of strips of insulation that's going to go in there. It's going to be a very fiddly process, but with this in place, I should be able to get the drawers permanently mounted. Whew. I'm so glad I went for the self-adhesive version of this insulation. That is so much easier to work with. So now I can get this thing back in place. I've glued and screwed the box for the drawers in place, so all that's left to do now is this. Voila! The head is really starting to come along. Now the next step is for me to mount the sink, but sadly I can't do that yet. I need the sink holy doohickey down here. I don't know what that's called in English, but as soon as that shows up, then I can get this set in some foaming epoxy, and uh, yeah, that's most of the head done. The shower portion over here is going to be a lot quicker to put together because it's basically just adding a sheet of plywood or foam right here and a door and we're done. But I'm going to hold off on doing that until I've got most of the big items in place in the technical compartment. Lots of good progress this week. I got those port lights glassed. I got the pole all ready to be mounted figured out the countertop for the head, and of course, painted the itty bitty Perkins. Or at the very least, got it primed. And yes, I know it's gonna be a smoky business when we turn it on because we painted the exhaust. In next week's video, I hope that I'll have gotten the parts for the itty bitty Perkins so we can actually get it hooked up to the alternator and start testing the generator. That would be a lot of fun. I also think I might be able to get started building the tank that's going to go underneath the cabin sole. We've got a bunch of glorious aluminum here, or aluminium, depending on where you're located. And I've never welded aluminum before, so that would be a fun challenge. Also, over here in my empire of incredible messiness, uh, somewhere here, yep, I've got Athena's pedestal that we can start putting together, but... 
yeah, I don't know if that's going to be next week. But as you can see, there's plenty of exciting stuff coming up. And that just about wraps up this week's video. Yoko and I hope to see all of you guys back here in the workshop and back aboard Athena at 8 p.m. CET next Sunday. And uh, yeah, that's it. So as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.